Good afternoon, everyone. My Sunday weather briefing for this uh, July 8th finds that overall I would have to consider my forecast is not extremely different from what I presented from back on Friday, but definitely I'm noting somewhat cooler and somewhat wetter trends in my overall Corn Belt forecast for the next two weeks. You can see that on looking at the temperature and rainfall outlooks for this afternoon, uh, certainly no areas of uh, much above normal readings anywhere in the nation for uh, any of the uh, two-week time frame, uh, certainly entering in more uh, normal and below normal readings uh, for the Corn Belt, uh, especially as you get out towards the 11 to 15 day time frame, but even during the 6 to 10 day period as well. I have to consider that 6 to 10 day precipitation forecast is wetter than what I presented back on Friday. Still a lot of below normal readings uh, with regards to precipitation in the 11 to 15 day time frame, but as always, I think that that forecast in general might have a too dry trend to it. As far as the QPF discussion is concerned for the one to five day time frame, uh, no real disagreements versus what is shown. I note that the bulk of the rain that is shown for the Corn Belt is going to be occurring late in this period, so this is a map that can certainly uh, change a lot in the days ahead. Overall considered as a map that is probably overdoing coverage, but probably is underdoing what could be some localized better rainfall amounts than shown. Uh, then for the day six to seven time frame, I think that this map is in general uh, kind of a uh, blend between a wetter GFS model and a drier uh, European model. Uh, more than likely it is a forecast that is going to be changing a lot in the days ahead. Temperatures for your Sunday afternoon, nothing real big in the way of heat uh, anywhere, uh, especially to the east of the Plain States. Uh, note that fairly mild temperatures seen on this Sunday afternoon for a big portion of the Corn Belt, as well as uh, the Mid-South and Southeast, with most of that area seeing temperatures as of 4 o'clock in this Sunday, staying below the 90 degree mark. Certainly the radar is uh, very quiet in the Corn Belt on this Sunday afternoon, and it looks to be staying that way uh, right through the daytime hours on Wednesday. We do have some thunderstorms blowing up uh, right now in the northern Plain and a severe thunderstorm watch has been placed for a portion of that area, uh, seeing your typical uh, late afternoon and evening uh, shower and thunder shower activity in portions of the Mid-South. That is going to be a very common occurrence in that area for quite possibly the duration of the two-week forecast. As far as your rainfall forecast through 7 o'clock in the afternoon on Wednesday, again, the quiet look of the Corn Belt radar on this Sunday afternoon is something that is going to be dominating the look of the Corn Belt right through Wednesday afternoon. Note that a uh, model agreement is very good that big portions of the Corn Belt uh, from now uh, through 7 p.m. of the day on Wednesday is going to be seeing nothing in the way of rainfall. Uh, anything that is seen in the Corn Belt during that time frame mainly going to be in the far southeast. That would be mainly with regards to afternoon and evening showers in that area for tomorrow afternoon and again on Tuesday afternoon. Also maybe some rain in the far northwest, most of that rainfall occurring for tonight. Uh, then as we get towards Wednesday night, that is when we are going to be seeing some rainfall chances of more noteworthy nature returning to the Corn Belt and probably a situation where there's going to be some rain somewhere in the Corn Belt on every day from Thursday right through at least the end of the 10 day time frame. Uh, looking at surface features as of uh, 7 o'clock in the morning on Thursday, you can see that some thunderstorms along a cool front uh, are going to be working into the far northwestern Corn Belt uh, at that time. Again, as I said, several chances for rainfall after that. Uh, just picking one day out, this would be as of uh, 7 o'clock in the evening for next Sunday. You can see that uh, not a lot of model agreement on details, but you can see that all of the models in general are suggesting some rainfall chances at that time uh, in the Corn Belt. So again, emphasizing that uh, seeing some more significant rainfall chances returning to the Corn Belt by around Wednesday night night and likely a situation where there's going to be some rain falling somewhere in the Corn Belt for Thursday and throughout the 6 to 10 day time frame. As far as temperatures are concerned, again, relatively mild readings across the Corn Belt for your Sunday, but a lot of the area is going to be going to above normal temperatures for tomorrow, and above normal temperatures are going to be dominating all of the Corn Belt right through the end of this week. Uh, probably overall the warmest day during that time frame is going to be for Saturday. Note that extensive area of uh, temperatures running pretty easily above normal across a big portion of the nation's midsection at that time. Uh, looking at specific high temperatures for Saturday, wouldn't call it a lot of extreme heat coming up for the Corn Belt, but you can see that as we get towards Saturday, uh, a big portion of the nation's midsection looking at high temperatures that day uh, above the 90 degree mark, uh, and that's something that is going to be seen at least in portions of the Corn Belt on every day uh, from tomorrow right through Saturday. Uh, most of the way uh, in anything in the way of 95 plus degree heat in the Corn Belt going to be confined to mainly southwestern portions of the region. Uh, again, the landscape across the Corn Belt pretty green right now. We are going to be drying things out to some degree, but I still 
still think that uh, not a whole lot of extreme heat. The bulk of any 95 plus degree heat uh, for tomorrow through Saturday going to be just in far southwestern portions of the region. It is going to be a situation where a very warm nighttime lows are going to be seen. Already a sizable portion of the corn belt looking at low temperatures staying above the 70 degree mark uh, for tomorrow morning. That will continue right through next Sunday morning. Uh, there will be several mornings during that time frame in which 70 plus degree overnight lows are quite extensive across the region. Uh, probably the warmest morning overall is going to be next Sunday morning. You can see the extensive nature of the 70 plus degree lows at that time and note a very large portion of the southwestern Corn Belt and into the Plain States seeing low temperatures next Sunday morning that stay above the 80 degree mark. As we get towards next Sunday, note that we are still looking at a lot of heat at that time in the southeastern plains and for a good portion of the uh, central and eastern Corn Belt. But note the very cool air that is starting to dive into uh, a lot of the far western Corn Belt, the central and northern plains, and into uh, eastern portions of the Canadian prairies at that time. And that is a sign of things to come for the rest of the two-week time frame. Although that cool air is really going to be taking its time and moving eastward. A note that temperature anomalies as we get towards Tuesday, uh, certainly a bigger portion portion of the Corn Belt at that time looking at below normal readings but still easily above normal temperatures even for uh, Tuesday July 17th and southeastern portions of the Corn Belt will probably have to get to Wednesday July 18th before a uh, southeastern portions of the Corn Belt truly cool down but once they do a lack of heat generally going to be seen across the Corn Belt as we get in towards the 11 to 15 day time frame. Looking at upper air features for the 11 to 15 day period this is 500 millibars for 7 o'clock in the morning on July July 18th. We're at the very start of the 11 to 15 day time frame. Note that any dome of high pressure at that time taking up its normal southwesterly U.S. position and we have a northwesterly flow on the Corn Belt at that time. Remembering that most of the rainfall in the northwesterly flow would be occurring between the 582 and 588 height lines or just south of there. That would put a big portion of the Corn Belt in the bullseye for the potential anyway for some rainfall activity in that northwesterly flow aloft. Looking at 500 millibars as of the end of the 11 to 15 day time frame at 7 o'clock in the morning on July 23rd. Again, your dome of high pressure taking up its normal summertime residence in southwestern portions of the nation over the Four Corners region. Still a northwesterly flow aloft in the Corn Belt. Uh, a lot of the Corn Belt still would be in kind of the bullseye for what would be some rainfall chances in the 11 to 15 day period via that northwesterly flow aloft. Again, I'm going with the models in the 11 to 15 day time frame. The models themselves, not especially hopeful for additional rainfall in the 11 to 15 day period but as always in that northwesterly flow aloft it is always my fear that the rainfall pattern turns out to be wetter than the models would initially suggest. Internationally for your Sunday afternoon, uh, not a very wet forecast for the next two weeks for a lot of uh, central and western portions of Europe. We are going to be seeing some nice rains over the next 10 days for Poland and areas to the south of there, but for western Germany, a lot of France and into England, rainfall amounts there look quite modest for the next 10 days. Temperatures over the next two weeks running strictly above normal all across Europe. For the summer row crop areas of the former Soviet Union, looking at close to normal rainfall there during the next two weeks. For those main uh, dry eastern growing areas of the former Soviet Union, the eastern Ukraine, and areas to the north and east of there, they're still going to be seeing very limited rainfall for another five to six days, probably right through Friday. Uh, their increase in rainfall there probably not going to be occurring until about Saturday uh, through the end of the 10 day time frame and some additional rains in the 11 to 15 day period. So close to normal rainfall overall for the summer row crop areas of the former Soviet Union, but we're still a number of days away before some of that rain gets into the eastern growing areas where the rainfall is really needed badly and even when the rain start up I would not call the amount as especially heavy looking at the time of this forecast. Uh, with regards to the spring grain areas of the former Soviet Union a very distinctive uh, uh, westerly to easterly component to the rainfall forecast. Note that some big rain is going to be falling in western growing areas during the next 10 days. Decidedly dry weather pattern during the next 10 days though for areas further east. For the corn and soybean areas of China some very good rain is going to be falling for the next uh, two weeks across corn and soybean areas of Manchuria that rainfall evenly divided between the 1 to 5, 6 to 10, and 11 to 15 day periods. A fairly dry forecast for the next two weeks for the North China Plain. A lot of the rain that is going to be falling for especially southern Shandong and areas to the south of there going to be occurring during the next couple of days before they do decidedly dry out for the rest of the two week time frame. For the Canadian prairies a better
better rainfall chances in more northeastern portions of the growing area for the next 10 days versus areas in the south and west. Some of the northeastern growing areas seeing some very nice rains while the far south and far southwest looking at fairly minimal rainfall amounts during that same time frame. It is a decidedly dry two-week forecast for the uh, wheat areas of Australia. Big portions of the Australian wheat growing areas seeing nothing in the way of rainfall for at least the next 10 days. Pretty decent monsoon in India for the next two weeks and that would be especially the case for those key oil seed and groundnut areas of Gujarat, far southern Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, and a decent portion of Maharashtra. That's what I have for your Sunday afternoon. We'll talk to you again tomorrow morning.